Well, hello everyone. I learned something totally new today that I was completely not expecting. This came as a bolt from the blue for me. I was under the impression that Newtonian physics was a deterministic theory of physics. In other words, if you knew the state of the universe now, you could predict with certainty exactly what the state of the universe was going to be for all future times. No exceptions. Apparently this isn't so. Now, um, this has been known since 1975, I guess. But it wasn't until recently uh, that a fellow by the name of John Norton at uh, University of Pittsburgh came up with a very simple scenario under which Newtonian physics actually goes non-deterministic. Now, this really has a lot of implications, I think, for a lot of the discussions that have been going on on YouTube. I mean, free will, uh, the Kalam argument for the existence of God, I mean, cause and effect, all this kind of stuff. So... Um, since this is such an interesting result, uh, and it's such a simple scenario under which it happens, I'd like to go ahead and present it for you. Um, please join me over at the chalkboard. So yeah, who'd have thunk? Newtonian physics is non-deterministic. So, apparently this has been known since the 70s, uh, but it always involved physically implausible things. I mean, masses rushing in from infinity, uncountably infinite springs, things like that. Uh, a fellow by the name of John Norton at University of Pittsburgh came up with a remarkably simple and very physically plausible scenario. I mean, you, you could think you could reproduce this in your kitchen. Okay, the scenario is called the dome, and here's how it works. We have this dome that has kind of a funny shape, okay? So the, uh, the equation which describes this dome is, uh, is this, okay? But basically, here's what it looks like, right? Now, here's how it works. We take a ball, and we balance it perfectly on the top of this dome. Okay, it's a unit mass. It's perfectly balanced on the top of this dome. So the question is, what happens next? Now, you know, in any normal scenario, there's going to be a little vibration or something, and the ball is going to, like, roll down. But we're talking about ideal scenario here, right? Conventional wisdom is nothing happens. The ball is perfectly balanced. Therefore, there's no net force on it. And in Newtonian physics, if there's no net force on something, it just doesn't move. But even though there's no force on this ball... The differential equation which represents this system has multiple solutions. One of those solutions corresponds with the common sense uh, solution of the ball not moving at all. But there's another whole infinite family of solutions such that they have the ball just starting to accelerate randomly down this, this uh, dome. Okay, what this means is that you balance the ball at the top of the dome and at any time t, it could be now... It could be 100 years from now. The ball can just, all of a sudden, just start moving. And the kicker is, it can start moving with no change in the force on the ball. In fact, when the ball starts to move, there is no force that's, that's acting on this ball. Well, you know, you could have knocked me over with a feather when I uh, actually read this. Uh, I'm going to post a link to um, John Norton's uh, paper over in the, the link so you can check it out yourself. But... Um, and also, later on in this video, I'll, I'll give a complete um, formal mathematical description of it uh, for you math geeks out there so you can see how it works. But uh, right now, I just want to talk about some of the philosophical implications of this, okay? Uh, first of all, free will, right? The only reason it would have ever occurred to humanity that we didn't have free will is because uh, we had a theory of physics, uh, Newton's theory of physics, that we thought was deterministic. Right? That's the only reason it would ever even have come into our brains that we didn't have free will. Well, you know, we've since found out that, uh, you know, Newton's theory isn't the, where it's at, right? There's quantum mechanics, there's relativity. But it was always thought that, like, you know, Newtonian physics is such a good approximation that in terms of free will, it doesn't matter. We're as good as determined anyways, right? Well, here's the thing, right? Okay, even if you use Newtonian mechanics to model us, we're still non-deterministic. So, um, I don't know. This, In my mind, this really kicks out a key support for any thought that we don't have free will. I, I think this really, really starts to question it. Okay, another thing, interesting thing. Okay, in previous videos and, and with some of you, I've I had discussions saying that, you know, there's no such thing as cause and effect. All right, especially in, in Newtonian uh, mechanics. I mean, you'll, you'll search in vain for anything remotely resembling cause and effect. This is another clincher for it, okay? You know, you, you balance the ball on the top of this dome, and it can just start moving, right? There, there's just no um, change in the force on it at all. This really brings into question. So this would, would count as an effect which does not have a cause, right? And this brings into grave doubt 
any argument for the existence of God, like the Kalam argument for the existence of God, which says, you know, every effect has a cause, which has a cause, which has a cause, so they've all got to go back to God somehow, right? Um, this completely brings that also into question. Um, so, anyway, it's a very interesting uh, discussion. So, um, I thought you all should know about it. And in the time remaining on this video, what I will do is I will walk through the mathematics of it step by step. Now, uh, this is going to look very uh, bizarre to you if you don't know uh, calculus and if you haven't taken uh, freshman university physics. Uh, but, okay, if you've taken one semester of university physics, this thing is going to be so simple to you, you won't even believe how simple this scenario is, right? So, um, and, and those of you who don't know physics or don't know calculus, uh, you might get something out of it anyway, so, so give it a shot. <laughs> Here it goes. <laughs> let's hope it's not that bad. Okay, so let's make the mathematical equation which models the, the path of this ball down the hill, right? So the ball is going to like start rolling down the hill. It's going to follow path R. Okay, now what's the net force acting on this ball? Well, we have straight down the uh, force of gravity, G, but the ball doesn't feel all of that force, right? So we calculate it this way. First we take the tangent of the surface, uh, where the ball is contacting the, uh, the, the the dome. And then we find the angle that the tangent takes with the horizontal. And we can calculate the force acting along the path R as F equals si G times sine of theta. Right? So let's take this equation. And uh, let's also notice that sine of theta can also be calculated as the slope of the tangent. Right? So dH dR, which is just basically, you know, the derivative of the height with respect to... Uh, how far you've gone down the hill, is also equal to sine of theta, right? So we've got a common factor here. So let's plug in, and we get the force acting on this ball equals g, the force of gravity, times the first derivative of the height with respect to the path down the hill. Okay, so let's put this equation over here, and let's focus on this funny uh, expression here, dh dr. Well, recall... Uh, Norton chose a very funny shape for this dome, and here's why, right? So if we just take the first derivative of this, we get a very interesting expression, right? So that's what dh dr is. So putting them together, identifying the common factors, we get this is the equation for the force acting on the ball, which we can simplify to just this. So the force acting on the ball is just simply the square root of the distance which we've traveled down the dome. All right. So, if we want to predict the motion of this ball, we've got to predict the acceleration that it takes, right? So, Newton's equations tells us how to do that. It's just F equals ma, right? So, since we've chosen a unit mass, m equals 1, so we just say, you know, the acceleration of this ball is just equal to the force on it. Well, we've got an equation for the force here, so let's identify the common factors, factor it out, and we say the acceleration is just equal to the square root of the distance you've traveled down the hill. All right? Well, another way of saying uh, acceleration is, is, is the second derivative of the distance we've traveled down the hill with respect to time. So identifying the common factors there, we get, ta-da! This is the differential equation that we have to solve in order to predict the motion of the ball down the hill, right? Okay, the common sense solution is a solution to this equation, right? Where the ball just doesn't go anywhere for all eternity, but... This differential equation does not satisfy the Lifshitz condition for a unique solution. It has multiple solutions. Here's another possible solution for it, right? So let's just very quickly verify that this is a solution. Okay, let's take the first derivative of it, and then let's take the second derivative of it, right? And uh, now we'll take the square root of it, and identifying the common factors, you see that it does indeed satisfy the differential equation for this. So, yeah. Basically, what this says is, at any time t... The ball can just like start moving in any radial direction it, it wants to with no change in net force whatsoever. Well, if you've made it this far, uh, you can see this is an amazingly simple system which would exhibit the, the non-determinism. I mean, it's just, it blows your mind that nobody had seen this before. In fact, I think this is a great um, warning to people, really. I mean... The only reason I think that uh, such a simple solution hasn't been found is that everybody thought in their mind that Newtonian physics was non-deterministic. I think people really have been blinded by their preconceptions. So this is a good thing to keep in mind. Um, even if you're absolutely convinced of something, even if you're absolutely convinced there's no way out or this you're deterministically screwed or something, it might not be so. Okay, The limitations might be in your mind, might not be in reality. Okay, cheers.